at least once is now behind bars. The loss of my baby feels like a sacrifice. It's, it's putting so many other parents at rest and it's giving other parents closure that wouldn't have never happened. I want to look at this story because it so well exemplifies the fact that this is a belief system. Domestic violence is a belief system and the belief that it's okay for them to murder their significant others. It's a belief system. It is deeply rooted, as you're going to see today very clearly through this story. Thirty-year-old Chandel Harris told her husband, 45-year-old Carl Watts Jr., that she wanted a divorce on April 2nd. It stemmed from them getting into an argument because of text messages that she found on his phone. In response to her saying that she wanted a divorce and threatening to leave him, according to a Miami police incident report, he punched her in the face, stabbed her six times, and then pulled out a gun and threatened to kill himself. Shandell was able to get away and get to her mom's house where they called the police. Now I'm going to stop right there. I would not recommend that you go to a family member's house. He followed her to her mom's house, which is not surprising with these guys. Don't go to somebody's house that they know if you're trying to get away from them and hide for your safety. He was outside their home, but when police arrived on scene, Harris's mother says he was able to just drive away. He was here. We yelling at the police, that that's him, that's him. He just stopped my daughter, he just stopped my daughter. Police looked for him later on, but he got away. The next day, thinking that it might be safe to go to a public place, which is such a common and understandable way of thinking, but it's wrong. In these cases, it's wrong. She went to the pool at a Jewish community center, the Michael Ann Russell Jewish Community Center in Miami, with her mother and her 11-year-old daughter for a swimming lesson. Her mother told the Sun Sentinel that Watts knew that she was going to be there. So there's another tip. If you're trying to hide from somebody in a situation like this where they've assaulted you, don't be predictable. Don't go to places where they know that you go when they know that you're going to be there. The hardest things to deal with as far as that goes is going to be your work and children's schools because that's not something that people uproot as easily. Anything that you could do to be unpredictable or just not show up, you know, where he had just assaulted her and this was in the middle of things, that would have been the time to skip that. But it's totally understandable that she thought, well, in public, I'm going to be safe. and. More and more, these guys are showing the public has nothing to do with it. It's not an important enough factor for them. The first calls came in around 2 in the afternoon. Security at the JCC is very tight. Most of the time, just one way in and one way out. You also need an ID to get around the facility. So it would be difficult for anyone to just walk in, except that on Sunday, swimming lessons are open to the public. I was holding her, and he said, he had money in his hand. He said, what can I do to make... You drop that charge. What, what can I do to make this charge go away? She said, first of all, you need to back up. He put out his gun and he sh was, went to shooting. And I'm holding her like this and he went to shooting. And I looked down because I didn't know if I was shot. And she ran. She wanted to get to safety. And she ran and he just walked behind her and just step shooting. Watts shot Shondell to death on the pool deck in front of her daughter, her mother, and lots of other children and families. Police say that she was struck by the first bullet and collapsed. And then he stood over her and emptied the rest of his gun into her. When I looked, I knew she was gone. Security guards at the center detained Watts at gunpoint and held him there until law enforcement showed up. Detectives say Carl Watts admitted to stabbing his wife the day before, and when she refused to drop those charges, he shot her. He's being held at the county jail without bond. So you were arrested for one count of second degree murder and one count of possession of a firearm, weapon, or ammunition uh, by a convicted felon. He followed her and chased her down and shot her. Like a, like a like an animal, like an animal, like he was doing hunting. The victim was at the pool deck in the pool area because was attending her daughter was attending swimming lessons. Family members say Harris recently had a falling out with her husband, and police confirmed there was a history of domestic violence. Domestic violence kills. There's resources out there. You don't have to live that kind of life. 
Relatives describe Shondell as a smart, sweet, religious woman who grew up in a large, tight-knit family. She graduated from Northwestern High in 2009. After high school, Shondell moved to Albany, Georgia, so that she could live where her grandfather lived. There, she earned a license as a registered nurse and also took an interest in local politics, hoping to one day become elected commissioner. But after her grandfather passed away a couple of years ago, she moved back to Miami. She drove for Uber and Lyft and worked construction with her brothers. Her brother Tyrell said that she wanted to write books and she wrote poetry. In fact, they had plans to create a mixtape where she was going to read her poetry and he was going to rap over them. She was amazing, he said. Watts, on the other hand, has a very different history. It's not one of promise like Chandel's. Watts does have a violent criminal history that dates back to 1994 with charges that include kidnapping to grand theft to drug trafficking and the list goes on and on. The former garbage man has an extensive criminal history going all the way back till 1994 or 95. It probably goes back farther. I'm guessing that that's when that whole juvenile records sealed kind of thing happens. His previous charges include multiple charges of kidnapping, robbery, grand theft, drug trafficking, battery, prostitution, assault, and illegal gambling. Those charges resulted in multiple criminal convictions and in time served. There was burglary, robbery, and kidnapping with weapons charges in 2003 by the Miami Springs Police, kidnapping and battery charges a few months after he was released from prison in 2007 in Miami-Dade County. He was also charged with false imprisonment and battery after trying to force an 18-year-old girl into his car in 2014. He was arrested and faced charges in this kidnapping case. Court documents at the time show he told police that he normally picks up young pretty girls when he sees them on the side of the road. The defendant admitted that he is attracted to younger girls. He was charged with false imprisonment, pled no contest, and served time for that case. And you gotta be wondering, I mean, I'm definitely wondering, why in the heck was this guy out? He was a very clearly a threat. A threat to any woman that he happened to be with or around, as you're gonna see here in a little bit, and a threat to society at large. Shandella and Watts had been married for less than a year. That's another sad tragedy to this. He came around for family events, he didn't typically want to be in family photographs. We didn't say anything. He kept to himself. He didn't talk much. And that's interesting too, that he, he didn't really want to be a part of their family. He just wanted his own thing. It's interesting that he didn't want to be in the family photos. Doesn't surprise me at all that he really didn't talk very much, but the family photos is interesting. I'd be curious if you guys have any thoughts on that. Both Shandell and Watts were parents, but fortunately, they didn't share any children together. Everything was for her child and for her marriage. My cousin, she's humble. She's very quiet. She, she, she's a great mother. You know, she didn't deserve this. She didn't deserve it. And he's already pled not guilty and is due back in court for a trial hearing on July 18th. However, as much as his criminal history tells us, we have to keep in mind that charges require that a person got caught and that somebody reasonably believes that there's enough evidence to convict them. Often what one gets caught with is very small in comparison to the things that they're, that they're doing that they don't get caught with, especially when it comes to like a career criminal, as in this case. When I googled Carl Watts when I was first looking at this, Carl Eugene Watts came up on Wikipedia, and apparently Carl Watts was a serial killer who died in 2007. As it turns out, their name's probably not the only thing that they have in common. So the Encyclopedia Britannica defines serial murder as unlawful homicide of at least two people carried out by the same person or persons in separate events occurring at different times. Because when I was listening about Carl Watts, when I was watching and reading his stuff, I couldn't help but think that he's a serial killer. So I wanted to look up what, what is the actual definition of serial killer, and the FBI has a range. So Encyclopedia Britannica is the way that I chose to go. This Carl Watts, Carl Monty Watts Jr., may also be a serial killer, with his first murder happening in 2009 that we're aware of. He's now being investigated in the connection with the murder and also with the disappearance of another woman, both of whom he had had romantic relationships with at the time of their rather interesting predicaments. 25-year-old Vicki Simmons of North Miami Beach, Florida, suddenly disappeared in February of 2009. Her family reported her missing. 
and two days later her body was discovered at the Sun and Surf Inn. Police did not reveal how she died, but they did say that it was murder. Vicky was found dead days after Watts had come by her sister's house where she was staying and asked if the sister had seen her. Vicky grew up in Miami and attended Booker T. Washington High. She had studied real estate and loved to dance. Her sister, LaShawn Jones, said she was mostly on the quiet side. Vicky had dated Watts for a couple of years, but she started to have second thoughts about their relationship. Apparently they got into an argument. It is possible that it was an argument over the fact that she was working as an exotic dancer. But not long after that argument happened, Vicky disappeared. At the time of her disappearance, Vicky's family believed that Watts was responsible. And that is so important because while you don't want to accuse somebody that has nothing to do with the situation, there is something very strong to be said about intuition. And Vicky's family knew that he wasn't okay. They knew he wasn't okay. They knew Vicky and his relationship wasn't okay. They knew that she was wanting out and then she mysteriously is murdered. Their intuition was telling them that he was responsible in some way. And that's valid. It's important. I don't think he was fond of it, like always. He don't like rejection. That's just the type of guy that he is, so. She went on to say that he takes you from your family and keeps you isolated. He's just vicious. The type of work the devil has you do. Taking people from their family, their kids. If this case would have been solved a long time ago, there wouldn't have been more victims. Before I leave this earth, I'm going to help my sister's case stay alive. There has to be justice done. According to the Fort Lauderdale police, Watts is still considered a person of interest in the disappearance of his ex-girlfriend, Turquita Scott, as well. According to her family, the day that she went missing in 2014, she was supposed to meet up with Watts to get some money for their son, CJ, who was one at the time. Turquita, a 24-year-old mother of two, was last seen in Miami Gardens on June 25th, 2014, and remains missing. Her case is still under investigation by the Fort Lauderdale police. Turquita grew up in Miami Gardens and had two jobs. She worked with U-Haul and as a home health worker for mentally challenged adults. She hoped to one day become a Miami Gardens police officer and had even done a ride along with an officer not long before she vanished. I want to take a second to say a couple of different things here. One, he was known for showing up at her work at the U-Haul and employees there said that she looked scared when he would show up. And two, there is a very common pattern of women in these situations being caretakers, being kind, loving, sweet. They're described as people who would do anything for somebody else. The idea of them working as a home health worker for mentally challenged adults or working as a registered nurse or working as a teacher, even law enforcement sometimes, but that doesn't seem to be quite as common. Those types of positions, they draw that type of person and these type of people are drawn to that type of person. So unfortunately, it is very often a story about people being distraught because this very kind, loving person was murdered at the hands of a psycho. These stories are no different. Turquita's mother, Kangirl Allen Scott, was one of the last people to see her that day. Turquita had picked her up from the hospital because she had just had surgery and she was driving her around. When she told her mom she had a headache and she wanted to just go home and lay down, but she couldn't because she needed to go and meet Watts and get this money from him, her mother begged her not to go by herself. But Turquita assured her mother that everything was going to be fine. Now how often do we do that? How often do we believe it's going to be okay? Just put it out of my mind. It's going to be okay. Please listen to your intuition. Her family was listening to theirs. That's the last that we had seen or heard from her, her father said. And maybe her mom pleaded with her not to go alone because she knew that her daughter had received a threatening message from him not too long before that, like earlier that day. Or maybe it was because she knew that he was stalking her and kept showing up at work and stalking her in other places. Maybe there were other things that she knew that haven't been reported in the media, but the point is that her family knew that there were red flags, they could see them. Watts had told her family that they met and then she left, and he didn't know what happened after that, but he denied having anything to do with her disappearance. However, six days after she disappeared and was labeled a missing endangered person, Miami police found her 2007 Ultima. Her body has yet to be found, 
but the Sun Sentinel previously reported that phone records placed Watts in Liberty City where Scott's car was found the day that she disappeared. Wanted for questioning, Watts did turn himself in on an outstanding federal warrant. The Sun Sentinel reported in August of 2014 that Watts turned himself in for violating his probation on a weapons charge, and by November 14th he was in prison on a weapons charge but he was never arrested for Takeda Scott's disappearance and remains a person of interest in that case. In fact, when he was questioned by police, it was reported that he invoked his right to remain silent. So it doesn't sound like he was very cooperative at all. At the time of Trakita Scott's disappearance, her family publicly said they suspect that Watts. He was questioned by the Fort Lauderdale Police Department, but never charged in Scott's disappearance. Fort Lauderdale Police now consider him a person of interest. We spoke to her aunt. Where is she? What did you do to her? So he was never charged with the disappearance of Chiquita Scott or the killing of Vicki Simmons. I wonder what else he's done that he hasn't been charged with. Of course, these other two murders are just allegations for now. But if it slithers like a snake and it hisses like a snake, what are the chances that it's a duck? Vicki's sister wonders if the crimes that happened after her could have been prevented. The department failed us. The system failed us. They don't have a choice but to pay attention. The system felt us. Yeah. As far as the 2009 and the 2014 cases, the families tell us that at the time, police told them that there just wasn't enough evidence to arrest Watts in those cases. In that 2009 case, Miami-Dade police now say they're revisiting the case. And the Fort Lauderdale police say in the 2014 case that they're now considering Watts a person of interest. This has to be like a serial killer. He was getting lucky. This time he got sloppy. Family of Shondell Harris is left wishing he had been put behind bars years ago. Today, Watts appeared in court, his hands cuffed in front of him. He said nothing as a judge upped the homicide charge he's facing. He should be fined in the first degree. He went there to the JCC with a gun. Guns aren't allowed in the JCC. And then he shot the victim multiple times. To me, it looks like there's probable cause for first degree murders.